From beyond him, cross came Brick Welch, and Brick Welch challenged by Damian Hayes, still challenged by Damian Hayes. Bricks on the ground, Hayes is advancing, awkward angle, right across, all the way towards the Tanyan over there, trying to make a better angle for himself, and he's fired it over the bar. Good play by Yerla Tanyan, his first point of the match. And it's one four to four points. Yeah, Jaron, very unselfish play by Damien Hayes again. No angle across the Tanyan and over the bar. And Damien had a hand in the first in the last point there as well uh, for Jerry Farrer. So you know it's good to see Galway Forest playing as a team. Clinton Hennessy's puck out to the centre of the field. There between Tony O'Gregan and his man, and it's breaking to Kevin Moran. Moran again advancing. He's done this a couple of times, hit it into the ground then. Miss hit because there was a defender immediately after him, and he didn't have the latitude, I suppose. But he might have done better with that. Yeah, Jerry, you expect maybe the forwards to spread out a bit. Really, there was very little movement. You can see Shane Walsh coming back into the picture there, but really they want to be pulling away and leaving the centre open for Kevin Moran. But that's a couple of times, and he's really hurling at the top of his game at the moment. Galway must be a little bit concerned at the half-back line because uh, time and again Waterford have been able to breeze through there, set up opportunities. Once again it is centre-back Michael Brick-Walsh, that time beaten by Ger Farah who kicked it in. Back here to help him to try and get it away was David O'Sullivan and Damien Hayes really, really fired up for this. Line ball has been hit poorly, straight to Damien Hayes, inside to Tanya, goal chance! Out it comes once again defending there by Waterford of the panicky variety and it's no Connors down eventually but they got themselves into a lot of bother as a result of a very careless sideline ball by David O'Sullivan and really if you're going to play into Galway's hands by setting up chances like that you could be in real difficulty in this quarterfinal and a yellow card has been shown here to Damien Hayes first of the match and that's the reason why Noel Connors there, the injured player. This was the opportunity a little while ago here. And Ilya Tanya, who just got a point a little while ago, was in there. Good defending, however. Credit Liam Lawler and the rest of the backs for doing their job. Noel Connors is OK. Yeah, I think that was accidental. But you saw Damien has very excited, you know, uh, gesture to the crowd before that. And, you know, you have to be careful. Now he's on the yellow card early in the game. And... Another over-exuberant tackle, it could be on the line. You can over-gesture, can't you? And get too hyped up from that free. Breaks down here towards Porik Mahoney, helped out there by Tony Brown. Joe Canning, the number 14, trying to get it in. It comes out towards Shane O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan about to be challenged, but still got it forward neatly and tidily. John Milan now, checking his stride, hitting it off his left, partly blocked. Comes back once again, and it's Adrian Cullinan getting it away here. Back in there towards Donald Barry. Neatly forward through Tony O'Gregan. All of the half-backs combining up to the centre-half forward, who is Ger Farraher. Joe Gantley needed a second touch. Now David Burke taking it on his stride, has a support player outside. It's Joe Canning from a huge distance out from outside the 45-metre lines. And because of the angle, it's 50 metres from the target. And Joe Canning has got his first point of this All-Ireland quarter-final. One four to five points. Yeah, Jared, there was an awful lot of passes, maybe enough five or six passes down the field, but they got it to the right man out in the sideline at a great point. Again, the puck out is down, directed towards the Waterford half forwards, but they're in trouble at the back again. No Connors trying to come across here. Latanian takes it. Here, Latanian, and the referee calls it a penalty. It's a penalty to go away. A ball that was lost at one end of the field, played down smartly as far as Zirla Tanyan. Coming after him was Liam Lawler, his man, holding his hand in his hurley, and the referee eventually deciding that the number three has fouled the incoming forward. Watch it again here. Well, he really was tugging ah, him back. Yeah, there's no doubt, Charles. Definite penalty, and Zirla Tanyan did very well. But Noel Connors, you know, he originally dummied the ball and let it through to himself. Noel Connors came across and should have just flicked it out the wing and uh, didn't deal with it, and now it's a penalty. And, you know, Joe Canning doesn't miss too many of these. Well, 13 goals in the championship so far for uh, Joe Canning. His team two points behind, and this can set them into the lead for the first time in the 17th minute.
Well, he's taking his time over it. And the referee wants everybody back. Three on the line. Clinton Hennessy and his two defenders. Canning striking and scoring. Putting it in fast. Shane O'Sullivan on the goal area. A goal then coming in the 18th minute from the penalty spot. Struck well by Joe Canning. Deep into the corner of the net. And Galway lead by 1-5 to 1-4. Yeah, it was almost a casual finish. He just stroked it into the net. It was maybe like something you'd seen in a soccer match. He just picked a little spot in the corner and didn't overexert himself and stuck it away. A, a very good goal. Well, there weren't too many spaces for him to aim at. My goodness, he was pinpoint with his accuracy. Andy Smith now, and Galway will get a huge lift as a result of taking the lead here. Quarter of the game gone. John Milan for Waterford coming back. Firing it well and putting it over the bar. Good play by John Milan, his first point. Playing today in his 45th championship match. Wears his heart on his sleeve, but has thrilled the crowds over the years with some brilliant displays. So the team's level now for the first time in this match. Great catch by Michael Brick Welch, losing his way, but then finding it again very quickly. Kevin Moore now leaving it here. Owen Kelly coming across, trying to rediscover the form of a, a year or so back. Neatly forwarded here as far as Shane O'Sullivan into a two man inside forward line. Doesn't quite work out initially, might yet. Stephen Malumphy playing it back, intended there for Milan but intercepted instead there by Fergal Moore and the clearance is a huge one down but that's an absolutely brilliant catch neatly taken there by Dara Fives on his hands and knees is Kevin Moran fouled by Andy Smith free to Waterford this was an absolutely wonderful catch here by a very fine young player and there was the foul by Andy Smith Absolutely, I'm surprised to see um, Jim Skell poking balls down the middle. You know, he's, I think Brick Walsh has caught at least three puckouts already, and I think it'd be a better tactic to avoid him and, and puck the balls down the wing. The possession so far, Galway marginally ahead, well, fairly significantly ahead. Porik Mahoney to take this. As a couple of players are playing hands, knees, and bumps a daisy off the ball, Andy Smith there and Kevin Moran. Boric Mahoney from his own 65 meter line hitting it to the right they try to keep it in play but it's in vain and it remains 1-5 to 1-5 that's six wides now for Waterford and just two for Galway Waterford made the better start Galway have made a good recovery and let's yeah. see now with this next puck out, as you say, whether he keeps it away from Brick Walsh down the centre. I think Galway were a bit shell-shocked. You know, they can talk all they want about being ready for it, but they probably expected maybe Waterford not to be as sharp as they were early on, and, but now they've settled into the game, and it's a very good contest so far. And it's uh, Joe Canning who's lost his stick, having another go. Coming back to help out there, Tony Brown. Getting a bit of support. David O'Sullivan with a big clearance down the field up as far as John Milan into the centre here towards Shane O'Sullivan bit of loose marking around the middle of the park there in the part of Galway comes in here as far as Shane Welch and Shane Welch who got Waterford's goal has now got a point so a goal and a point then for the 28 year old from four mile water and Waterford shoot back into the lead again by 1-6 to 1-5 yeah, that's a really good score. Watch the high ball there. He just flicked it back over his head into, and made space for himself. And Shane Walsh during the league was absolutely outstanding and started much brighter today than he did the last day. And Michael, they've just made a switch there. Shane Walsh has got onto the 40 on Tony O'Gregan and John Milan is now playing full forward. Virtually yeah, on his own. Yeah, they're probably hoping for a ball to go in there and to, you know, a 50-50 ball and get in for a goal. Well, if Galway have been listening to all the talk over the last two weeks that it was simply a matter of turning up here and going through the motions that they were bound to win this quarter-final, they could be in difficulty. They've hit it into Joe Canning, and Joe Canning levels it up once again. For one man, they're going to look to time and again. So it's 1-6 to 1-6, level for the second time. Yeah, and I think Joe Canning looks very sharp mentally today. He's been on a good few balls. He's scored a couple of good times from play and the penalty, but he's picking up plenty of breaking balls and he's hitting a few good balls on the ground as well. Very involved in the game. And they're largely playing him at right, or sorry, left half forward on Tony Brown. It's going to be a line ball. 
And this one will be to uh, Galway. Donald Barry ready to take it. Didn't start in the match against Galway or against um, Dublin. Came on at half time in that match when Galway were really out of sorts. It's going to be David Collins instead. Good connection down towards Damien Hayes. Been marked somewhat tigerishly by Noel Connors. Helped out here by Michael Brick Welch. The little hand pass as far as Kevin Moran and then delivered a good 60 70 meters in towards John Milan. Batted out by Collins. Comes back here again. This time towards the man who was introduced as a substitute before the start of the match, Owen Kelly. And Kelly's aim is not all that terribly smart. And he's hit it well to the right. Yeah, but it was the wrong option again, George. John Milan had just drifted outside him for three or four yards, a simple hand pass, and he would have had a clear shot on goal, and the wrong option there by Owen Kelly. Pick up puck out down through the centre. This time, Irlitanian running in behind Brick Walsh. It was well delivered from David Burke across here, as far as James Regan. Ger Farraher now running into a group of Waterford players, and one of them, Paul Mahoney, emerging with it there, slipped it in the little hand pass to Malumphy. And Malumphy from a huge distance had a go, but he looked away almost in annoyance the minute he'd left his stick. He pretty much knew it was nowhere near the target. Still level, 1-6 to 1-6. 23 minutes, 24 minutes gone. And that's probably the biggest uh, maybe fallout from the last. I think Waterford just a bit over-anxious, trying too hard. That's about, I think, eight wides at this stage already and hitting ridiculous wides in the middle of the field. Ger Farraher at the end of this doesn't take it. It's taken by Kevin Moran instead for Waterford towards Shane Welch, nurses it into himself, Shane Kavanagh's immediately after him, hit into space, should be Adrian Cullinan, nobody near him, so he's got plenty of time, can pick out the pass here now, all the way down beyond James Regan, on towards Joe Canning, the one that we're looking to, and uh, Paul just beat him for pace. And don't forget the uh, draw for the uh, GA All-Ireland Football Qualifiers will be taking place after 6 o'clock tonight. That's the uh, quarterfinals draw, and that'll be after 6 o'clock on this channel, on this programme. Dara Fives hitting this. Tony O'Gregan coming across. Sweeping well there, pressurised by Seamus Prendergast. Helped out here by Fergal Moore. Good relieving clearance. On to the 65 metre line, and once again, Michael Brick Walsh really playing well. Back to his best, but back in his be best position anyway. It wasn't really fair to have played him in at full back in the Munster final. Here comes Milan, down went Milan under David Burke's pressure, and the referee says that John Milan.